I will be putting a link down into the description where you can find Darkfire Designs so that you can pick up a Boba Fett of your... of your... Of your, of your, of your do, do not of yourself. Wow, talking is hard. So, yes, today I am painting Boba Fett, but not just any Boba Fett. I'm not painting the Fantasy Flight Boba Fett. I am painting a 3D printed Boba Fett. This is my first 3D print on the channel, and I'm very, very, very excited to be painting this one. This is a Boba Fett modeled after his look from The Mandalorian Season 2. I'll be putting a link down in the description so that if you want a copy of Boba Fett for yourself, then now you know where to get it and also go support Darkfire Designs because they make some really, really, really amazing Star Wars STLs. If you're a 3D printer, or if you know someone who 3D prints, yeah, go check them out. Very cool. So what's one thing that I've never done before that I really wanted to try with this particular model here? Well, um, the version of the Boba Fett that I got, he stands on a little rock, or as some people like to call it, his little tactical rock. And I really wanted to make that rock resemble more of the aesthetic from the episode that he first appears in his armor in. So I looked at quite a lot of reference photos from that episode, and that's my goal, to make those, to make that rock and to make that base scenery look as similar as the environment in that episode as possible. And so that's gonna take some really figuring out how to do that, and it's gonna take some really fun dry brushing. Yay, I love dry brushing, it's really fun. <laughs> So yeah, cool, I'm really excited about painting this one. I really find this model really dynamic and it just looks really, really cool. And yeah, Boba Fett in that episode was so badass and I'm so excited to be painting this model. And yes, uh, I wanna do more 3D prints, very excited. Okay, cool, without further ado, let's get into the painting process. So I'm gonna start this painting process just like I've done with pretty much all the previous models that I've done so far is with a Xenophil highlight. Yay, Xenophil. And the way I do my Xenophil highlights, once again, I do my Zenithal highlights with an airbrush, but you can just as easily do your Zenithal highlights with the shake cans, if you like. Totally, totally the same thing. You can get the exact same effect. You don't have to have an airbrush. I just have an airbrush, so I use one. There you go. Fight me. <laughs> I prime the model completely in black, and then using the Vallejo Surface Primer Black and the Vallejo Surface Primer Gray, which kind of is a little bit more white, um, I prime completely in black, and then taking the Vallejo Surface Primer Gray, I spray that model, angled from the direction of where the light source would be hitting the model, and only from that angle, and it creates some very nice natural shades. So there we go. Priming is done. Yay. Now with the priming done, it's on to the base coating. So when I started out painting this model, I started out painting the model when episode 14 came out, where he had more of a tannish flight suit underneath him. And then I was working on this model throughout when episode 15 came out and he had more of this, and he had a much cooler matte finish to it where he had really cleaned up his armor. And then I was like, oh man, I really want to do that look now because that's a really cool look. I mean, not that the other look wasn't cool, but like I really wanted to do this one look. So I start off painting Boba Fett with his episode 14 look by painting the flight suit underneath a more tannish color to match, but then I decided to switch to his later cleaner look. The painting is a very forgiving. I started out painting one color and decided to switch to another. Don't be afraid to switch things up in the middle if you don't like it. So for the base coating, I started out with the robes underneath his armor. And for the robes and the cloth pieces, I went with Army Painter's Necromancer's Cloak. The boots I painted with a matte black. Shoulders and knee pads painted with an even mix of Phoenix Flames and Fire Lizard from the Army Painter. Gauntlets have been painted with Vampire Red. And I painted the belt and the holster with Dirt Splatter. There is a part of the belt underneath the cartridges that is a lighter tone, so I use Monster Brown for this part. And for the leather belt, I use Chaotic Red to get a little bit more of a red leather look. 
For the blaster pistol and the armor pieces on the back of the gloves, I use Citadel's Black Templar. And for the gloves, I also use Dirt Splatter. For the green armor, I had quite a bit of trouble deciding on a tone for this one, so I decided to experiment with tones until I found one I was very happy with. If it helps, you can practice with tones on another surface, or lightly go over the model with your experimental tone. If you're thinning down your paints enough, you can get dozens of layers onto a mini before you, even, before you start losing detail. So feel free to be creative and experiment. For the red lines on the helmet, I use Vampire Red. And for the shell cartridges, I use Vallejo Metallic Steel. For the visor, I use the same technique I used for my clone troopers in a previous video I did, so go check that out if you like. It's a mixture of Black Templar and Flow Improver, and I dab the brush onto the visor and let the ca capillary effect pull the paint across the visor. Finally find a tone I am happy with for the armor using a one-to-one -one mixture of Army Painter's Angel Green and Army Green. Now, in the episode where he, in episode 15, when he has his more cleaner look, he's painted the patch over where the damage on the jetpack was with the same tone as the jetpack. And I like that they went with the Empire Strikes Back color tone design for the jetpack, but just to give this model a little bit of extra uh, contrast and a little bit of diversity to it, I didn't want to paint that. Uh, patch the same tone as the jetpack, so I painted it using a Vallejo Metallic Air Steel. For the armor highlight, I used the same mixture that I did for the base coat on the armor, progressing further towards a pure army green mixture, using less and less angel green. His armor in the show does not have a lot of reflection, so I wanted to keep the highlights to a minimum here. I touch up the jetpack in the exact same way. For the robes, I decided to dry brush on a dark gray and progressively lighten up the gray and hitting less and less of the robes, only the most raised areas with the lightest tone. Using the same tones, I attempted to layer some highlights onto the boots, but I very clearly need to practice the shiny leather effect just a little bit more. It didn't really come out as well as I had kind of hoped. Something to practice on, getting that glossy, shiny leather. To highlight the gauntlets and the red areas of the visor, I progressively add a little bit more pure red to the vampire red to pump up those highlights. Now, here's the part of the model that I was most looking forward to, and that's the basing. So I start out by painting the rock in a solid layer of Army Painter's Mars Red. For the rest of the base texture, I use Vallejo Earth Texture to cover the rest of the base. I dry brush the rock with Dungeon Gray, Stone Golem, and Arid Earth, careful to leave a little bit of the red showing through and apply less and less pressure with the dry brush the lighter in tone that I go. Taking an old brush and some PVA glue, I paint around the rock and sprinkle some grass texture around it. When that's dry, I add a very light arid earth dry brush to tone it down to the green slightly so that it's a bit, the grass looks a little bit dried out. And then I add a couple bushes and I paint the ring black. And now I'm gonna call that done on 3D printed Boba Fett from The Mandalorian. This has been such a fun model to paint. I really enjoyed it. I hope you were able to pick up uh, a little bit of cool ideas for your models. And yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments. And if there's any other cool like Star Wars or other types of models that you'd like to see on the channel, 
let me know. Cause yeah, I'm having fun with I'm having fun with this, and this is such a fun way of learning how to paint and document my progress as a painter. This is gonna be so much fun to look back a year from now and see the progress of where I'm at a year later. I'm so excited to be able to be able to do that. Thanks for watching this video. I hope that you had a great time. Let me know what you think of, of the Boba Fett down in the comments and share with me your painting experience. All right, with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.